session. My name is Stephen Mee. I'm the CEO of Aviatrix. And we also have our founder and CTO, Sherry Way from Aviatrix. First, we'll go through an overview of the company and some of the high-level problems. Very briefly, Aviatrix is based in Palo Alto. We're venture-backed. We've been building cloud-first networking software for the past four years. And we're partnered very closely with the AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud uh, teams. And we're an emerging leader in cloud routing. And we have a software-defined controller and gateways. We'll talk about that further. Uh, our whole mission is to make cloud networking as dynamic and simple as compute and storage. Very briefly, where do we fit in the market, uh, the landscape? Uh, you can think of the on-prem networking solutions at the bottom here. Then there's connectivity into the cloud, of course, in the middle. And at the top, there is your cloud routers. And in the cloud router space, we break it into two groups. There's virtualized cloud routers and software-defined cloud routers. And in, an, in another section, we'll be discussing software-defined cloud routers and that difference. As I mentioned, we're partnered closely with AWS. They recommend us. This is a couple of their, uh, their web pages. And they talk about the AVHX offering, as well as uh, we're a noted AWS competency partner. They have a category called networking competency. And today, we're one of two solutions that is a network competency partner. So we're thrilled to be part of that. That means that it's been built for the cloud. It's also uh, a system that is well architected. And uh, uh, this is Sherry in one of her uh, webinars with AWS and talking about uh, our architecture. These are uh, a highlight of some of the companies that work with us and trust AVHX for cloud-defined routing. Uh, won't go into details with these. However, uh, we can look at uh, another thing is multi-cloud. And what we mean by that is multi-public cloud. Now, not all of the companies are at that stage. What we see is that companies find themselves getting into multi-cloud in one of two ways. They find that they, uh, there's a team that wants to leverage a service in another cloud, and therefore they go with that. Or they may find that they're partnering or acquiring a company that has a different cloud provider, and then therefore need to support both. Now, let me, let me go through what's so unique about cloud routing. Why isn't it just like data center routing? Why isn't it just like data center networking? And first of all, what we see is the expectations of cloud are very different than data center expectations. And so one way to think about it is a VPC, a virtual private cloud. And we'll use that pretty loosely because uh, and there's also a VNet in Azure, and Google calls them VPCs also. But you can get a VPC in minutes, just like you can get compute and storage in minutes in the cloud. However, when you're talking about connecting VPCs into an on-prem edge network, then it can take weeks, if not months of time, due to change control processes. So there's an impedance mismatch associated with these expectations. And uh, we think that's very unique. Love to ask uh, the delegates here if, if you see some of those differences. I saw a head nod over here. Um, yeah, I was just comparing to this to everything else that is software defined and the fact that what we're really doing is we're really taking this all down to the speed of business. We want to be able to provision very quickly. You know, we no longer have the ability to wait for things to happen, yeah. to send trouble tickets and all of that. So, so yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. Right, right. Yes, and we, we think that the opening cases is, is, is you know, too slow. People want to be able to self-service and also be able to handle their problems themselves. And we think that's a great challenge that the public cloud providers are now saying, hey, networking has to rise to that challenge too. And uh, that's what we're about. Okay. Uh, then the second item that's unique is that the skills gap. In the cloud, there's no more silos of storage engineers and you know, virtual compute engineers, systems. They're now very broad. However, the networking experience tends to be limited across that set. And what we find is that cloud teams can be uh, fairly small. Uh, you can get a lot done with a 10-person team. And there'll be one lucky individual that has some networking background. And they're, they're, they get to be the ones that handle a lot of these VPCs. But that also means that they're the only ones. And so uh, going on vacation and things like that is very hard to do. And, and we think that that skills gap means it's not that we need to certify more and more network experts. What we need to do is make it easier for networking across cloud engineers. And uh, we think that's, I, saw, I see you nodding. Do, would you agree with that? And maybe you can tell us about your organization. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, as networking people, we're pretty specialized. And, and even 
in companies that I know that are that have uh, uh, the, the theory of everyone's a generalist. They're still the guys who know more about networking than everyone else. Yes. And I, the, I, I, I've been telling a story a week. I won't tell you now, but it it ends with. Well, in 10 days, I'll remember I have that ticket in my queue and get to you. Mm -hmm. so, but like you were saying, there's no way we can wait 10 days now, right? For mm -hmm. That's right. In fact, the expectations are so high that they'll view that as a problem and say, you're, you're not letting me innovate because the networking is holding us back. You're right? a blocker. You're a blocker. Right. <laughs> right, because you're seen as interfering within their current development sprint. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, that's right, that's right. Okay, and then the, the last area of uniqueness is that the scale uh, is, what we see is customers have, they may start off with tens of VPCs. And a VPC is, is, a, is like a mini data center, so it's a network. And if you, they're going from tens of VPCs to hundreds of VPCs. And those are many, many networks that you have to now manage. And that scale presents a whole different set of challenges from a management and operational perspective. And to visualize this a little bit more, this is one customer's journey of how they, within AWS, look at their, their growth of VPCs. And so in 2015, uh, the account is, is the bigger dot, and the smaller dot is a VPC. As you know, uh, VPCs are tied to accounts. And uh, so they had a production, one production account, one non-prod account. And within that, five production VPCs and 15 uh, uh, non-prod VPCs, now a total of 20. In a year, they more than doubled. They added 29, 27 more, uh, 29 more accounts, and they added 62 VPCs. And then a year later, it went to 35 accounts, 35 VPCs, and uh, uh, they went into this model. So we see that the scale is very important to, to uh, manage, and that's something which requires a different type of cloud router. I'd uh, love to hear if, if anyone uh, in, this, in the delegates have seen some of their scale, or you know, maybe you have a view on how many VPCs you have, you've seen in an organization, and how you've seen that grown or expected to grow in the next 12 months. Anyone? No? Well, I think one big problem is no customers that I speak with even have a cloud strategy. It's like the wild, wild west out there. So that's the first conversation. First thing I say in a conversation is, what is your cloud strategy? Knowing darn good and well they don't have one. So they need to get their heads wrapped around this and know that we live in this hybrid world. And mm -hmm. you know, this is all part of that strategy. Mm -hmm. Control where your workloads are, control how, you know, what we're using, the software defined. So mm -hmm. yeah. everything can be quicker. And uh, I, I think uh, you were at an airline and, and maybe you could share how you saw the VPC, how, how do people look at accounts and VPCs there? Uh, it's pretty well defined, but um, there's only a few. I mean, the, the VPCs are actually pretty restricted and limited. And the, the problem with a lot of organizations is they'll start deploying uh, cloud and then they, they will put things there. If they have any problems, they get pulled back. And it's kind of like, like a lot of things in technology. When, you, when you're aggressively trying to try something, and it doesn't work, a lot of people will start turning it off right away. Mm -hmm. um, so I've actually seen the, re the reverse. I've seen it go from full scale up to pulling it back and, mm -hmm. and taking a second look about how, how we're going to, we had a presentation earlier that talked about the, you know, people have this very optimistic, hopeful idea about cloud and they start getting into it and they realize the growing pains and it's not, you know, it's not just all rainbows and mm -hmm. unicorns, it's, it's, there's some, there's some mm -hmm. discipline that's needed. And so they had to pull that back. So. Um, I've kind of see it. Go, I've seen it go from a, a quick ramp up to a pullback to simplification, and then and a second attempt at it with some more discipline. Okay, great. And uh, uh, we certainly see that some folks take a strategy of fewer accounts and fewer VPCs, very large ones. However, the general trend we've seen is to go to more segmented uh, VPCs and a large number of those. And that presents problems associated with scale, even for the cloud provider, where there's limits as to how many routes you can have per VPC, for example. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. This is the- Yeah, I can add one Yeah, thing. go ahead. One of, the, um, one of the driving force for um, the many VPC, many accounts is billing. 
is accountability, billing chargebacks, and either charge to your customers or charge to your departments and be used. And the best way, the simplest way is to give them a separate account rather than doing tax and those much secondary level of complexity to do the billing. So that is how it drives because of, you know, you have 35 teams or business units and you have 35 accounts and each account will have prod, non-prod, and stuff and different projects and that's how the if you really start to get serious about managing the the cost and managing the risk and security then that's how uh, it uh, becomes a very large scale so right. yeah. so you've just heard an, an overview as well as the problem space that we're in AWS talks about their VPC growth as a whole going fourfold in the next three years and so that's that that's uh, the area that we're in okay thank you